So, Lola, we'll start with you, please. Just tell us briefly, just a brief bow, who you are and what you do. Thank you. My name is Lola Diogujimi. I'm the creative director for Dainty Affairs Beauty and Bakery. But because you know, I was asked to you know, speak to you today about my bakery business, I am wondering if you can just show a slide of some of the things that I do. Baking for me is an art, and we practically take sugar, flour, things that you see every day and just think, oh, cake can just be a simple buttercream cake, and we create art. You know, you see cakes that you've never seen before, things that resonate to you. We're very skillful. We, it's really important that from how the cake looks to how it tastes, it evokes a feeling of pleasure, you know, surprise and happiness in you. Excellence is key to me. So being here today to talk about excellence is really dear to me. Thank you. Thank you, Lola Day. Let's move to the next person. A woman of excellence as well. Thank you. Not who's best. So just yeah. tell us a little bit more of what you do beyond acting. Okay. Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Kane De Bancole. Like she said, I'm an actress. I am a performer. I am a singer. I'm a speaker. I'm a poet. But most importantly, I am myself. Um, so that's who I am. Thank you to yourself to discover your my name is Bam Kali and um, I graduated from this school a couple of years ago. So we come into passing to Alice and Akokai as well. I currently work with Stanky IPC. Um, what do I do? I provide financing solutions to corporate clients. So we have a big corporate presently and I'm constrained to the telecom. So what to see, what to, what to practice in terms of the phone calls today, the wide range of things to provide the finance that we have for all the stuff.
for the Lord that they employ me and pay me, right? That's how we started. Until the Lord of interest came into it. That's very good. So you started in the value of like one is two. So what point to you tell us how did you get the foundation? You always wanted to be a better one, and so you always desire to get a suit and a tie. Just exactly what you prepare yourself for why you do. Interesting. Interesting thing to know there is this. You know, I, uh, I have to say that I work with man because I don't think I'm traditionally a man like that. Uh, but my life did not start after high school. Much like many others said, while I was in junior high, I remember clearly that uh, I came across some people and I I built some relationships that's that has connected them with us my life even to this. I was saying to someone recently that it's amazing that I met one person in junior and I connected with many more people and that relationship has connected me with different kinds of jobs that have gotten out of. There's a job can link all of them together. And I don't know why I was doing that I don't think I was sure of my past, I wasn't anywhere near that. But I I was extending myself in terms of giving tutorials and I think I was helping one or two people. Don't think, I'm not talking about um, the, the jigs at all. I wasn't one. But I was doing the best I could and I think some master students, some MBA students were around there and one person just required that I should put him through the simplest things in economics. And I got on board to do that. The man I, this man I'm talking about is a palm in Lagos today. And I remember that the way I built that relationship, it left, stopped being academic. It became a life relationship that it connected me with many other people. And I remember when I finished seven, I didn't have to tender CVs up and down. I was recommended. I was recommended for a job. And I got a job doing that. I was recommended for another job through that. So I've never had to really write, I want to apply for a job here. Yeah? It's always been my a reference, somebody referred me. Thank you very much. What um, essential skills do you, did you develop while you were in school and do you advise our uh, Akokites listening to us to have beyond your passion, it's okay to have a passion, but what skills do you need? He mentioned one, leveraging on relationships, that's interpersonal skills. So I would like you to touch on other um, skills that you need to leverage on so that you can drive your passion to the exact place where you need it to be. So we'll start with you again, Lola, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Communication skills, that is very key. You need to know how to communicate with people. Communicate with your friends, communicate with um, people older than you, people younger than you. Learn to treat people right. You really never know where you will meet them. It's really, really important. That is probably one of the most important things I want you to take out from here. Learn to respect people. Learn to respect people is very, very important. And learn how to articulate yourself. Um, just last week, a young lady came into my office for a job and she looked so pretty, so beautiful, made up and all of that. And she sat down, I said, can I have your CV? And she gave me this CV, it, it looked very rough. And I asked her, did you write this CV? She said, no. I said, so who did it for you? Oh, I gave it to someone to type for me. So I went through the CV and I said, okay, so you studied economics and I forgot what was there. She said, no. I said, so why is this on your CV? And then I paused and asked her again, are you sure you're a graduate? How come you didn't write this? And the next thing she said to me, my mom sent me on an errand. You know, it's important that beyond what you're getting from school here, prepare yourself. Google is a universal teacher. How do you, you know, take yourself from what you've learned here to what you will be getting outside? And I'm sure to say that I didn't really finish the interview with her. I had to tell her, go back, prepare yourself and come back for this. So beyond what we're doing here, it's important you learn how to communicate with people, you learn how to articulate what is in your mind, all right? Communication skills, please take note, very key. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll say that it's good for you to know, to have an idea of what, where you're going. So you start to align yourself with learning the things that have to do with it. I knew already, I didn't know I wanted to be an actress, but I used to like a lot of, I had funny, funny mentors then. I used to like Tyra Banks, I used to like Halle Berry, and I will just cut little clippings of them. I will watch them catwalk. I would spend my time doing the things that would take me to where I was going as at then. Afterwards, I knew I liked to act, I knew I liked to speak, so I would read more. And then I loved to sing. I joined the church choir. You will serve. It's in place of service 
maybe to somebody who's, um, who's some music director that has a keyboard somewhere. At, spend your time doing the things that align with where you're going. So those skills are essential for you to acquire. You want to be a footballer. You don't even know how to toss the ball with your toes. You'd rather spend time playing PlayStation, playing the football on your computer than playing it with your own legs. So how are you going to learn? You know, so any skill right now as you're sitting, you know what you'd like to be. Skills that align with that thing, begin to learn them. Along the line, there'll be some of those skills that will not be useful to you. They will fall off by themselves. But there'll be some that will be very essential to you. Second thing also is the social media. A lot of you need to learn. A lot of us continue to have to learn how to use the social media. There are many people that will be on the social media doing what they're not supposed to be doing. You can do a bit of this and a bit of that, but not spend all your energy on it. Then some of us find mentors online. You find somebody you like to be like. But you spend half the time wanting them to comment on your photo, like your picture, instead of you just monitoring and mentoring uh, yourself with what they do. So uh, use social media well. Lastly, before I, on this same topic, I remember there was somebody who had gotten my email or something or followed me on Instagram or something and sent me a direct message of some sort. And I opened it and I hardly have time. And then I had that time. Okay, let me pay attention today to this. And I opened it. Guys, you'll be shocked what I was saying. Junk. Okay, this person now has time to talk to you. They were just, um, can you come and my sister? <laughs> they were just being petty. Social media is there for you as a tool to get you out there faster than any of us had to then. We struggled to, to get a lot of things then. But now, at the tip of your fingertips, you type, you do, everything is there for you. So I think social media is also another skill you need to pay the right attention to. Thank you very much. Okay, my colleague, skills. You talked about relationship, interpersonal. So. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to talk to people that don't have very distinct technical skills, mm -hmm. like me, because you could be very good in, act, uh, in acting, and then it's your, your part is almost clear. You know that this is what you're good in. You could be very good with art in terms of cakes. You know your passion is clear. But when you are more like a generalist, you, have, you are not very skilled. You can't sing. You can't do most of those things. And then you are someone like me. And I, I'm think, I think people like us are in the majority. <laughs> so what did I do while I was in school? One of the things I think has helped me, and it stands out significantly, is that while I was in school here, I read books completely outside my academic requirements. And I devoted like a desert ground I was seeing water. At that time, I didn't understand the changes that were, that were being born in me at that time because I was just reading wide. But in retrospect, I look at it that, okay, I had, I had friends that finished with first class and I'm looking at the way our careers have progressed so far. And I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to say that they have not done well, but I've looked at on a comparative note, I think I've done far better than most of them. And the reason is this, the input I had then in reading books, in reading self-help books, in reading biographies, shaped my mind. It shaped the kind of discussions I had, such that by the time I found myself in the corporate arena, the kind of language I was using was different from what my peers were doing. It was easier for my leaders and my bosses to commit great tasks to my hand because Without knowing, I was not speaking the language of a fresh graduate. Without knowing, I was not speaking the language of a very naive green, green on. So one of the things I, that I look back that's worked very much for me, apart from building relationships with senior people, is that the books I read dominated my mind, shaped my conversations, and people were, just like the two speakers have said, they saw the value that I brought to the table in terms of my speech pattern, and it was easier for me to climb the ladder faster than most of my colleagues. So he's talking about study skills, right? That takes me, your statement takes me to one question I need to ask, like speaking the minds of my advocates. How can students develop that skill of combining academics with education? How do we combine both? How do I read the school books, which is endless, handouts, assignments, and still have time to read life books? and be excellent in life and in education. The honest truth is I'm not a reader. Okay. I'm not. That's the only book I read is my Bible. But honestly, if I have to read, I'll prefer to listen to audiobooks. 
So that, 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 there are times you're walking or you're probably not doing your lectures and instead of listening to those you know, songs or being on YouTube or whatever, plug in or download it, audio books, and begin to read. There's sometimes if I'm not caught up with social media or when I'm being driven in the car and I have time, I have a book in my car that I can always bring. And so put things around you that you know you can always, oh, I'm bored, let me take this and read. Sometimes it's just one page today, one page tomorrow. Before you know it, you'll finish it up. Thank you. I'll be honest. For me, I was reading, but I was reading Mills and Boons. I was reading uh, Temptation, Harley Quinn, all those kinds of books. Okay. So my mother observed that I really loved to read. Like, I won't sleep until 2 a.m. because I have to know what happened to the guy on the horse. But the point is, you were the, reading your school books, right? Oh, certainly. So how did you combine? That's the question. It was... to strike the balance? It, um, until I started reading for the things I told you about, which is until I was specific that, look, this thing is going to get me close to. I wanted to be a Tyra Banks. If reading this... And you even look like her. Do you know that? <laughs> if reading this book will get me closer, that uh, purpose was not what made me read my, my normal books along with the academic books. So the academic books were there. I had to read, especially because I was trying to prove a point to my parents that, look, I can act and do well in school. Otherwise, they were going to stop me from acting. So if everybody was reading for an hour in school, I would have to do four hours. So that pressure was there already. And I wanted to read novels too. Every girl was always talking about one romantic guy in one novel. You know, I wanted to be a part of that as well. So the only thing I could say helped me to balance it out was, one, my mother knew I liked to read books. So she saw what I was reading. So she started saying, what about, um, um, she started telling me other writers. I read Pears in the Darkness. I read some other, although I would still read some James at the Chase by the side, but I was, my mother switched what I was reading. And I made sure that I started reading things that would interest me because of where I was going. Right. So that made it very easy for me. All right, so Banky? Okay, for me, I think the first thing I had to tell myself was a very hard truth. And I think um, one of the speakers has spoken about that. I realized I was very disadvantaged compared to the global world. I came to terms with that quickly. And I realized that, look, if you're, if you're starting 20 yards behind, you will need a lot of intensity to catch up. So one of the things I realized that by virtue of location of being born in Nigeria or schooling in, Lake, in Nigeria, I was at a disadvantage with the global world. And I'm happy to say that all the organizations I've worked with are international organizations. They are multinationals. But I realized on time that I was not at an advantage. I was not even at, at the same pace, at par at all. So I had to address that. And the way to address that was by reading. Another thing also that I realized was when I came into Unilag, I didn't think Unilag was an end in itself. I realized quickly on time that Unilag was just a preparation ground. So I wasn't going to be frolicking around and doing everything. Look, I wasn't an ethical, don't get it wrong. But I was very purposeful with things I chose to do. I wasn't going to just go and see, now I've arrived, this is Unilag, what more can be better than this? 90% of people were like that, that, what, what else do you need? You're a Unilag student. And those days, I don't know about now, but those days it was a pride to be a Unilag student. And so I, I addressed that on time because I realized I was disadvantaged, so I had to read books. I had to start applying myself in ways that would make me at least measure up with the global counterparts. And it's paid off. It's even paid off more because someone that is growing up in the Western world, when we have to meet and do meetings, they grow up and these things are given, the facilities are given, but I had to deliberately study it. So it creates an edge even in your conversation, in the kind of outputs both of you deliver. That's, that's what I realized and that's what made me combine the two. It was not an easy task, but I had to do it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So you can see where it's trying see, we could go on and on and on and on, but we have to go. We have to go. So before we leave you, we'll take one final word from everybody here. They will tell you something that you take home today. And when we see you put that in action, trust me, we'll come back to uni like. So we'll start with that. Kindly, not by not. Kindly. Okay. The last word. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. I, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Um, particularly, I always think about people who have a lot of greatness around them, but who don't take advantage of it. Because you're bitter, you feel you deserve it, you feel you've earned it. My father is rich, why are they treating me like this? My sister can afford it, why is she not giving it to me? My, you spend half your time being angry about the things you're not given. They're, they're making me a day student when I can always live in the hostel. 
you are so focused on the things they are not giving you. Yes, and then because you're so surrounded, surrounded with comfort, you're the last person to realize that you're not doing well. There's food in your house all the time, there's DSTV, I mean, you're chilling always. You just come for classes, you go back. You stay on the average because everything is okay around you. So sometimes, don't be fooled by the comfort you have around you. Please, pretend that there's some, there's some kind of um, scarcity. Pretend in your mind that you're not so comfortable because after a while, that comfort you're seeing right there and then may not be there anymore. So be prepared all the time. Boy Scouts, be prepared. So, the final word. I want to go that route to prepare for a future you cannot see because it is coming. Opportunity will just come. It won't knock at the door and say, I'm coming. So you need to prepare in every sense of the way. Thank you. For me, I think you need to tell yourself some very hard truths before, you, before life tells it to you. Hey, did you hear Life that? is going to tell you some very hard truths. Mm -hmm. Your ability to absorb it is, is going to be determined by how much you tell yourself the truth quickly. If you do not tell yourself the truth, life is about to give you some dirty reset slap. And you are not going to, you, you don't know where it's going to end. Like they say, you can be, you can, you can, you can be skillful, and we're not talking about, you can be naturally gifted and finish the first class. But life will tell you that, that, that does not count. You can be hired for your good degree, but you'll be fired because of your lack of awareness of other things. So what I will tell you is this, start to prepare for the life you're about to enter. You are just starting. And life is going to be like this. There's a whole lot more you don't know. So you can't just, you can't prepare enough. Thank you very much. So, summarily, from everything you've heard today, your academics will take you to the door, but that's where you stop. You need other things to get you through that door, and that's excellence in life. Something Pastor Femi said today that really hit me, he said, the way you think today will determine what? Where you'll be tomorrow. Do you agree with that? So start the winning thinking, start the excellence thinking, till we come your way again, we say goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you.